It is the bathing place of our older people, tūpuna. It's a spiritual place to to tūhoi, to myself. It's home. I think as far as uh, difference of, of scenery in New Zealand, Waikiri Moana has amazing forest. The, the botanical diversity is the most impressive in New Zealand. It's great climate, impressive bluffs, mountains, that, that real classic North Island bush clad scenery. Great walk it follows the shorelines of Lake Waikari Moana. Uh, we've got a beautiful panikere that's at the head of the lake, if you like, and it's mingled with the ancient forest. Large tracts of forest which have remained untouched for thousands and thousands of years. I've done it once before and spectacular. Beautiful, mind-blowing, nothing short of amazing. Yeah, we're hoping to see a few birds and um, see some great views as well. It's just good to get time out, you know, and escape from everything yeah. <laughs> for a while. Not watch TV and have no cell phone reception for a while. And... Anyone who wants to, to get into tramping, this would be a really good moderate level tramp. As long as you pace yourself, I would say that, that uh, anyone of a moderate fitness level would be able to do it and, and do it comfortably. Pretty amazing to be able to bring my nana on this walk with us. It's been her lifelong dream to walk the Waikari Moana track and she thought she was never going to do it. So I suppose you could say she took it off her bucket list. Yeah, she loved it. One of the major points of Waikiri Moana is there's a real sense of history, amazing place and you can't help but feel there's something out there, it's, it's an amazing place to hang out, amazing place to be. Be prepared to get to know yourself, know yourself really well. Um, the isolation allows you to drain your normal daily thoughts and, and pressures to realise who you are as a person and that connection with the whenua. A lot of people don't realise what that is until they experience it and they walk away from this, this kind of place uh, with a renewed and refreshed uh, outlook on life. I think it's a spectacular walk to do. A lot of people do it only in one day as Tungarero Alpine Crossing but there's so much more to it. There's the eastern side of the, um, Mount Tungarero, the Tama Lakes area, the Waihohonu area, and you can put all that together as a two or three day circuit. So many different landscapes and everything is so close together. The atmosphere and fresh air. Massive tree ferns, pangas, then you've got the ice on the hills and the snow. Certainly on the summit of uh, Red Crater, it's one of the most spectacular views you'll see anywhere in the world. At the Emerald Lakes is um, quite often the lunch stop. And then it's down into Central Crater, which again is a, a flat eroded area, up to the ridge on Blue Lake. And uh, then you come through the saddle in between the Rotoponga and North Crater, and sidle around North Crater. Nice to see it kind of seismic, you know, live, yeah. cool colours and something I've never seen before. It's a spectacular place, Kedatai. Our highest hut on the Northern Circuit, 1,456 metres, and as you will have seen today, spectacular views from this hut, and it's set amongst all of the red tussock, and when the sun goes down, it's golden, it's a beautiful place. It's my favourite hut, always has been. 
descending into the Ojolari Valley. It's quite spectacular, it's like a moonscape. Quite a unique formation all the way through and lots of people write in the logbook at Ojolari that they've walked on the moon. It's a really nice facility. It um, really suits its environment and it, it, um, it's just a nice place to come to when you're tired and hungry and uh, cold at night time and you walk in and the lights are on and it's nice and warm and um, yeah, it's just a great, great spot. I still get a tingle every time I go certain places in the park. It's a special place and I love it. Oh, that river, it was just, just fantastic. I haven't had an experience like that before. Well, it means everything, eh? It's, it's the life force of the whole place, eh? It comes from the mountain and straight to the sea. It's good to bring tourism into the area and a lot of them we see uh, talk about going to get a cultural experience on the river. And, you know, we're all for it, eh? It's just what well, it gives us a chance to speak and show who we are. We basically try to give every river user a porty. Generally the end of the day, just before the sun goes down, we'll do one porty. We'll welcome everyone onto the right. And our aim is just to give everyone a little bit of the Whanganui style Māori and allow them to enjoy the beauty of this place. the Mangapuru Landing and it's along the Whanganui journey and people normally stop here to access the bridge to nowhere. It's just amazing <laughs> to see a bridge out in the middle of nowhere. The Mangapuru track is actually part of the Mountains to Sea cycle trail as well. It's quoted by the Kennett brothers who are the mountain bike gurus of New Zealand as if there's any one adventure ride you're going to do this year this should be it. I'm a local I love the place so it's good to see that um, more and more people coming to visit it. So we're at Mangawaiti campsite. Back in the day, um, a lot of Māori used to live high up in the river, so they used to have their marae and, and pa sites up, similar to the campsite. The Whanganui journey runs right through the centre of one of the country's biggest biodiversity projects called Kia Wariti. The project aims to improve forest condition and increase bird species. If people are doing the journey, not only do they get an understanding of the rich cultural landscape, but they also get a good picture of the biodiversity work happening in the area as well. To see it up and running and starting to get a bit greener and a few more of the native species coming through and then more kiwis and blue ducks and that's what it's all about really is keeping it nahiri up there and running and otherwise once we lose it that's one of the great walks or national parks gone. The bush is looking fantastic and green and, and an increase in some bird populations, kakariki and robin and as you can see lots of fantail, it's, it's pretty alive at the moment. You've got really settled weather for long periods of time. 
You've got native bush right down to the sea. You know, you've got the granite rocks uh, with all the different shapes. It's really terrific. It's really nice. So beautiful weather, beautiful beaches, seals, birds. It's one of the highlights of New Zealand, so that's why we come here. So it's our first tramping experience but it's been great. Kayak first day, camp out, and then uh, hike the second day. The beaches are amazing and had a great day so far. Absolutely stunning weather. We're loving it so far. <laughs> the sun is out, we're happy. from sort of April, May, June, a fantastic time to come to the Able Tasman because you've got a great chance of having a beach completely to yourself. They get to see it in its, its pristine, peaceful time. Every day is really different and that's what you know we really look forward to enjoying it. It's like a Roman road or something. I mean it's it's great condition. Very comfortable. Um, yeah, we're getting a lot of people come through and they all seem pretty happy with it. We've spent two nights out um, listening for goat-spotted kiwis and um, had pretty good success. You know, we've got native bush and then the golden downs, which is all tussock, and the beautiful Nikau palm forests and the beaches and the river. Well, three days of sunshine was a big highlight. The beach, first day, awesome. Yeah. Heaps of palms. It's almost like you're on a little island sometimes. It's beautiful. I mean, everywhere you turn, there's something amazing to look at. It's good to start with this one because it goes back to the point of origin and you don't need to worry about leaving your luggage. It was beautiful walking along the top where the trees are cleared. And then you get out and it's a beautiful view and it was all worth it. People that are, for example, traveling on the South Island and are not really tramping, and they don't see like the beauty of it, but you kind of have to get onto the tracks, into the wild to, yeah. to experience it. It's good to start with the great walk because everything is safe and controlled and everything, so it's a good start. It's good, it's the kind of type of thing you can do, you know, when you meet people. It's very nice 
nice to come here and be able to have like wilderness that's still wilderness, but at the same time, you can come to a nice hut and have a place to stay for a reasonable price. Oh, it's wonderful. It's the first track I've ever done in my life, so it's, I mean, a good way to start. The scale of the mountains, the, the waterfalls, the, the color of the water. Yeah, fantastic. Couldn't have asked for better weather. The snow across the top, it's reasonably challenging, but uh, no, it's fantastic. Great views, great scenery, really good. I've got a friend who lives in Queenstown who's spoken about it a few times and I thought, what the hell, I've done lots of trekking in Australia. This is just awesome. These huts are crazy, they're just awesome. I wasn't expecting flush toilets and toilet paper, so that was pretty fancy, I guess. Yeah. I was like psyched up for a real challenge, but I actually think that it's a bit easier than what I've expected. The sights and sounds and seeing a, a good chunk of New Zealand <laughs> at the same time is pretty awesome. Going up over McKinnon Pass, it was just phenomenal. It did snowed yesterday morning and then we got to go up over and just is pretty breathtaking. It was stunning. Passes the pamphlet. The root burn is better than the pamphlet. Most beautiful part of New Zealand. One of the great walks, isn't it? And we've heard like this is one of the best walks in the world. It's like one of the, in the top ten. So we thought, yeah, definitely want to come down and do it while we're here. You should have been here when the fog lifted, like we were. Oh, <laughs> well, that was fantastic. <laughs> So yeah, it's honestly like a postcard, uh, and we've been here uh, a number of times. We were but here this just is... last year in, in summer. We're going to bring everybody back here. My husband and I did the Milford Track last year and thoroughly enjoyed it, so we thought we'd try it again, and here we are. Yes, top spot. Track stunning. The root burn has um, more time above the bush line, better alpine views. But the actual tracks and the huts and Scenery is fantastic. Yeah, and the track quality is really good too. I mean, you know, it, it obviously very well maintained. A pleasure to walk on, really. We just took some amazing photos up there. It was just absolutely beautiful. So I highly recommend doing yeah. it. Yeah. We have done quite a few of the walks and I'd have to say it's right up there.
It's one of the best ones. It's fabulous. I guess we're lucky. Look at this weather. It's very clean. Um, the people are very friendly. I think that's the attraction of an island. You come with you know, that sort of isolation aspect in mind. And we'll get beautiful calm days right through from November through to March, but even those shoulder seasons when it'll stretch through and come sneak in before March, October, it's nice and quiet so you can walk the tracks and there's not too many people there, and right through to April. The big beautiful Rimus and Rata, you know, they're just all around us. It's up in the Rimus. We're getting basically another forest in itself. We've got all the epiphytes that are clinging to the tree. You can see the broadleafs, the ferns, and they're just, there's another forest up there just growing. <laughs> on Stewart Island, everybody talks about the mud, but on the Ruckiura track, that's a fallacy. Because what we've done is we've gone to great extent to, to make the track hardened and comfortable to walk. And what we come across here is these old steam haulers, and these were used for pulling or lowering logs down through the bush. It was sort of on dusk, and Peter spotted these two kiwis, and it was just an awesome experience. We've done a lot of walks, and we've never seen a kiwi in the wild. You know, we've seen them in captivity, but never in the wild, and it's something that everybody wants to do. I mean, you, you, you go on a tramp, in the hope that you're going to see something quite unique and, and we, you know, we, we scored on this occasion so it was fantastic. And the fun was going up there just on darkness and were we going to see one or were we going to see one and then we did and it was awesome.